Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last tutorial we had just finished creating these little collectible coins for our player and I gave you guys a little bit of homework. I wanted you to figure out a way to display the number of coins we collected to our player HUD. Um, hopefully you guys had some success doing that, but if not, don't worry. That's what we're going to go over today in the tutorial. Alright, so let's get started. First thing we're going to need to do, we're going to go into our widget and we're actually going to have to open up this widget okay and we're going to have to create some things in here first thing I'm going to look for is going to scroll down over here into panel and I'm going to grab a horizontal box now a horizontal box is basically a nice little container it's kinda like a pill box you know that you have put all your pills in and organize them from Sunday to Saturday and it keeps them, you know, horizontally aligned in their own little sections. Um, that's the difference between that and a vertical box is a vertical box is more like a filing cabinet. So you put things in from top to bottom. Horizontal box goes left to right. And I want something that's going to keep our stuff organized from left to right for this case. And the reason for that is because I'm actually going to put two text boxes within this horizontal box. So you can drag them and just drop them right on top of the horizontal box and you'll see it comes in there. Or you can actually go into the horizontal box itself and release and it will put the um, text boxes in there as well. We actually don't need our box to be this big. So I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit. And for this, I'm going to set to be fill over here. And this is just um, determining how much of this horizontal box you want this individual text box to take up. So I'm going to set both of them to fill, which means they're going to share evenly, basically 50%, 50%. For this first text block, what I want to do is I'm going to give this a different name. I'm going to call this our score. Which I'll make this capital. And it needs a little bit more room, apparently. Let's see if we can't fix that. Or no, it just didn't get the score. Okay, there we go. Score. So I'm going to center that and center it here. And for this text block, I'm going to change it to a default of 0, 0. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, like 48. And I'm going to center this as well. And now I can shrink this down a little bit. And we have a basic score box here. Now, if you guys remember what we did for health, we're going to actually need to make this a variable. This guy we don't really care about because he's just going to stay as this. It's just going to say score the whole time. We don't want to necessarily change any of these words around. But this number we do want to change. So we're going to come over here and click this little box to say is variable and we will say this is our player score text and we can make this a green color or something we'll compile and save and what we want to do now is go into our graph and we're going to create a function. So remember with the health, we created a binding, right? But when we redid this health, um, the health number, I'll show you guys again, this number here, we created a function. So that's what we're going to do for this number. For our score, we're going to create another function. Because we want to be able to call a little snippet of code from multiple areas, because we might have more than one type of collectible and we don't want to have to rewrite all of this code for each different collectible that we make. So we're going to make one uh, central function here in our widget. We'll call this add score. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to give this function an input. So this is a little bit new. I'm going to show you guys um, about inputs and outputs on these functions. So we're going to have an input to our function, and we're going to have this be the value. 
and we're going to make this an integer. And what we want to do is get our player score text. We'll get that. And we want to say set text. I'll move this over here. And the value that we want to set our text to, we're going to have to get our player reference. And out of here, we're going to get our score. That way we know the current score that we're at. And we can add to that every time we get a new coin. So we're going to come here and say add integer plus integer. And the what we want to add to it is this value that we're going to feed into our function here. And then we're going to set our score. So we'll pull off of our player reference again and say set score. And hook these up. Hook this here. And once we have that score set, we're going to set our text to that value. And we'll put this under here. So now we have a nice little function that can take in an integer value and add it to our score. So if we're adding something other than, you know, one or if every, all the coins right now are one point. But maybe later on in our game we make a coin that's five points. We don't want to then have to make a new function to add five points versus a function that only adds one. So that's why I put here in our function, it's going to take in this value and this is a variable that we can change. So we're going to be able to change the amount that we add to our score based on what we feed into this function here. So we're going to save this. And then we're going to go into our coin blueprint. And we're going to look for our overlap event here. I'm going to get rid of this print string because we won't need it anymore. So we'll delete that. And what we want to do our third person character holds a reference to our widget. So we're going to need to get that reference out. So get my first widget reference. Because remember, the function is within this widget here. So we won't be able to call any functions on our widget unless we have a proper reference to it. So we'll get the reference that we created in our third person character. And now we'll be able to call health val or add score right here. And you see this function, unlike the other function that we called for our health, which I can show you guys. You see health value doesn't have any extra pins down here because that function has no input. But this add score, you see now it has this little pin for value. And that's what we're going to use to set the value that we want to feed into this function. So when we overlap, our third person character. Instead of directly setting our score here, we're going to delete this, we're going to delete this, and we don't need this score anymore because we have that all wrapped up in this nice little function here. So what we're going to do is we just need to give it a value. So we can right click here on the value and say promote to variable. And this will be coin value and we'll compile and now we can set a value for our coin we'll have a default to one now another little neat trick if you look right here it says variable is not public and will not be editable on an instance of this blueprint that means that the four coins that we have in our world they're all going to have this default value but maybe we want certain coins to be worth more well if we click this little box here we can actually have this um, variable be what's called public and instance editable, which means that for each coin we place in the world, we can set this default value. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to move this down here. We'll compile and save. And now, if we go out into our world and we select one of our coins here, I can get the coin select this coin, you see it says coin 1, and it has a coin value, default value of 1. We can change this to be 5, for example. But if you notice, on coin 3, coin 1, and coin 4, it still says 1.
So we can actually have different values for each one of these coins. So let's put in a few different values. 10 for 4, 7 for 3, and we'll leave coin 1 at 1. We'll compile and save that. And the last thing I want to do is for this coin, we'll go back into our widget, and on in our event graph, just like we called our health value function to set it to 0, 0, we're going to want to call our add score. That way it can set our current value. So we'll minimize this, and we will hit play. And you see down at the bottom now, we have this little thing that says score and a little green number zero next to it. And as we collect our coins, you see it is now adding that to our score. And it's adding different values depending on which coins we've collected. All right, guys, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.